I didn't say it in that monologue, but the, the, the largest gathering of people in Washington, D.C., which is the capital of the United States of America, the largest gathering in the history of that uh, vitally important city just a few years ago was uh, a pro-life march, almost uh, a million people. There's been a larger one since then. Uh, that gathering of people, in a, Washington's not very large, as you, as you know, if you've been there, it's not really that big. Huge. It wasn't even reported. It wasn't even covered, mentioned in the Washington Post. There were some complaints, it then was given a bit of a mention, but th this is how these things work, you see. And yesterday, the gathering in Toronto was only a couple hundred people. It was terrible weather, but there were, uh, golly, a couple of thousand last year. That was barely mentioned either. The one in Ottawa, sometimes 10,000. That was hardly mentioned. But you get maybe um, a dozen people who want uh, more rights for uh, transgendered uh, raccoons or whatever, and you know that will be one of the lead items on the major news broadcasts in this country. Faith Goldie! joins us. You were there and uh, you spoke to uh, That's correct. Uh, off the uh, company dime. This sure. is on my own time. Yeah, uh, yeah but you're 100% right. It didn't get any coverage. I actually Google Newsed uh, the event just before coming on set with you and only Sun News covered it mm -hmm. uh, in, insofar as being after the event. This in a province where 50,000 abortions occur every year, uh, up to about $50 million are spent and actually, uh, according to a recent Agnes Reid poll, uh, there's actually more support for defunding abortion than there is for any political party in Queen's Park right now. 51% of Ontarians say, yeah, we don't want to actually be paying for abortion. We don't like this status quo. Whether you're pro-life or pro-abortion, sure. you just don't want to be paying for it. Uh, whereas, you know, the, the, the highest uh, ranked uh, party in office right now is just up 31, 33 mm. percent uh, popularity. So, uh, but still, somehow, it's not news to people. Well, I think the numbers are probably high if the question is asked in a slightly different way. The idea that um, a woman who she and her husband, a partner, can be pulling in maybe a million dollars a year, but you should have to pay for her family planning, which is effectively what it is. I mean, some of the reasons I didn't want to cancel my holiday, my career is not going in that direction right now. Once again, this is not about whether you agree with abortion or not. That's not the issue. There are many sort of passively pro-choice people who will say. Oh, yeah, I think it should be allowed, but you shouldn't have to pay for it. Even if you say, even if you say rape and incest, life of the mother, that'll be paid for. Let's put that aside for a moment. 99.9% .9 of these are, I don't want a baby, so I want to get rid of it. Okay, you pay for it. Yeah, and I think it's also a common misconception that abortion is a right in Canada. It's mm. not a constitutional right. Of course not. Neither uh, during its decriminalization under Trudeau or even the Morgenthaler case was it ever declared a right for women. And that's actually why I was speaking, Michael, was to draw attention to this idea of the woman, the female aspect to abortion. Because uh, women, girls are, he are fed a healthy diet of my body, my choice. Well, okay, it's not your body. It's got a separate DNA structure. Uh, the baby in there has a separate blood type, etc. But your choice. Is it really your choice? Because I'm of the belief that a well-informed choice is the best choice. And a lot of folks, you know, I'm a libertarian. I'm a big L liberal. I believe in more choices, more liberties for mm. folks. And this is called pro-choice. Therefore, I will be for it. Um, they are incredibly, incredibly wrong. Um, I will draw one attention. I'll draw your attention to something uh, with respect to women being completely wrong on this issue. Our education minister, Laurel Broughton, here. Um, refer to the pro-life stance that's taught often in Catholic mm. schools uh, as misogynistic. And she but said, of course, she is a cretin. Uh, yes. So that will maybe explain it. <laughs> But, and a very rich one, too. Oh, right. Um, okay. Um, so um, she said that this misogynistic, now in the new era of Ontario's Bill 13, it should no longer be taught. So first of all, imagine the fact that pro-life stance might be even illegal, you know, in the, in, in the fall semester. Um, but she's clearly ignorant of the facts, either ignorant of the meaning of the word misogyny or ignorant of the fact that 64% woman, uh, 64 of women actually report being pressured to go under, uh, to, to, to have this procedure sure. done. Um, several complications, um, infection, uh, failure to extract all the products of conception, in other words, perhaps a limb, uh, uh, other internal organs that were not properly sucked out, vacuumed out as they are. 75% of women, 10 to 15 years after having an abortion, actually regret having this procedure. Mm. Um, yet, somehow it's misogynistic to say, you know, uh, I believe life begins at conception. Well, look, we're not going to find any argument about, uh, based on, on the utterances of, of Laurel Broughton. I mean, she's not very bright. She's one of these extremely wealthy people who decides to play at politics, and I don't think she's a serious person in any way but there are serious people who do support abortion and even the public funding of it which I think is hypocritical support it but the public funding of, of elective surgery that is, that isn't consistent but I'd like to ask some of these people on the left how they feel about people being targeted for abortion only because they're female only because they're brown 
there's no such thing as a gay gene, but imagine if they did discover a gay gene. You know that many babies in the womb that exhibited it will be aborted. So how about aborting children just because they may be homosexual? The, the left react differently then. Suddenly it's mm, not completely comfortable. They admit viscerally, even if they don't want to, that yes, it is a human life. But if it's human life, you shouldn't abort for any reason. If it's only tissue, abort for any reason. You have to make up your mind. There's, there's no middle way here. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting uh, that you bring up the left because it was Kathleen Wynne's first, you know, defund abortion rally that was held while she's now in government, and she was nowhere to be what, seen. Well, hardly surprising. Were there, were there any MPPs there? Um, I believe that there was one trotting around. I can't remember who it was, but very, very small numbers. As you mentioned, the weather was just horrid. I was there last year, and I was wearing nothing but, you know, like a vest and pants. We now. say small numbers. There were still 200 people. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyone who has any experience in media will know there are certain TV states, well, actually most of them, you know, CBC and City and the rest, I mean, all of them, they do this. There'll be a press conference about something, some radical issue, and the camera will very quickly show the audience, and then when it pans out, you'll realize there are five people sitting right. there, yeah. and they're mainly from the organization. <laughs> no one cares, but it's made an issue because media say, it matters. Yeah, and here's the thing is that uh, regardless of what media says, uh, Canadians say it, it does matter. Uh, according to a 2012 poll, uh, Angus Reid, 51%, that is a clear mm. majority of Canadians, we're talking at the federal level, the national level, say that there should be laws that actually outline when a woman can have an abortion, if at all. You know, 51%. Mm. Yet somehow mainstream media says, you know, oh, this is a taboo issue. For the conversation those, is over. Right? Yeah, the, con the conversation is over. Meanwhile, yeah. it was never really debated, just like the gay marriage issue in, in this country. It's just like, you know, the Supreme Court says, uh, yes, this is the way our laws are, are yeah. going to be um, uh, struck and, and, and upheld and executed. Meanwhile, the debate, well, we weren't even given a chance to debate you know, it. That, it's a very ugly and dangerous and threatening language because... You can read some of the, uh, the debates about slavery or about apartheid in, in South Africa where people supporting these repugnant ideas said the conversation is over, the debate is finished. What they meant was we have the upper hand right now so we're going to be intolerant of you. And that's what these people are saying now. Well, the conversation is not over, the debate is not finished. Uh, even though we who do continue to speak out may be, may be persecuted. Yeah, and getting back to the taxpayer um, uh, slant to it is, is that the, the mentality is you don't like abortions, don't have one, just yeah. pay for mine. Yeah. You, you, know? you don't like rape. Well, don't rape someone. That's a very logical argument, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your time. You're welcome, Michael.